Welcome back to the show, everybody. It's time now for the Robert Sala Report. Brought to you by Slomans and Infinity.com. And the head coach of the New York Jets joins us right now. Coach is Michael Don and Peter. First off, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you guys. Hope you guys had a good Sunday night and uh, Monday. All good. Hope you did as well with your family. Uh, any decision yet on your quarterback for the weekend? Uh, no, we're still working through uh, uh, to see who's available. Uh, we'll find out more tomorrow. If Zach is healthy, would he go, or is there still a chance he wouldn't start? Uh, no, if, he, if he's healthy, he'd, he'd go. He'll go. You know, we were just having a conversation about the defense, and we could throw stats out, and we could throw – you know, how we feel about the defense. Overall, now that the season almost over here, how do you feel about how the way your defense has played overall? Uh, defense played well. It's just, uh, you know, we've had a couple of games that uh, weren't up to our standard. Um, but but overall, when with all things considered, uh, I feel like the defense has uh, performed well, with, especially with the backs that we've played this year. Um, it's been a tough schedule, but, but overall, you know, I'm always going to have such high expectations for our defense and feel like we should shut out everybody, but that's just me. Um, but uh, but overall, I think it's, it's it's done pretty well. We didn't get a chance to talk to you after that game, but were you surprised that Cleveland was able to put up that kind of a half against that, you know, pretty highly vaunted defense? Yeah, no, it, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Cleveland was not up to our standard. We had some opportunities, too. You know, we uh, feel like we had two interceptions at uh, – um, uh, we missed out on, but uh, but overall, give them credit. They did a really nice job uh, making plays when they needed to make plays, and um, they, they were definitely a step ahead of us with regards to to, to everything involved. You, I, we all, I also was off, Coach, didn't get to talk to you after the Commanders game. You didn't exactly look capable of enjoying that win there at the last second. No, it, um, you know, again, we didn't finish it. Buck it up to four really bad, four straight quarters for, for uh, of, of bad ball and uh, but uh, but I do think uh, defense came back in the second half, played really well because uh, Cleveland was still trying to to score and, and put up points and uh, felt like we did a really nice job forwarding it and uh, giving our offense uh, some opportunities. Took the ball away three times, scored on defense. Um, but like I said, it's um, you know the expectation for us here is to to lock opponents down and not let them score, and so it's. Uh, when that doesn't happen, it's you're always trying to find the right answers. You know, it kind of went viral a bit, Coach, your reaction to Rich Samini's question after the Browns' loss about your reactions on the field and you want me to turn over the podium, that whole thing. Um, but I, I thought it was a legitimate question just from the standpoint of you don't look as animated as you did when you were in San Francisco. It, for, is that fair? And if so, why? Um... You know, I, I, I've gotten up and, and spoken about this, I feel like, a million times since I've gotten here. But, uh, you know, what people see uh, from uh, what people took from animation in San Francisco was celebration. I always celebrate with our team, always. And um, But in, in adverse situations, I'm talking to coaches to try to figure out how we can get the player in the right headspace so he doesn't, ha so he doesn't make a mistake again. Um, I've never undressed a player in the public's eye. I always held it back for uh, team meetings and, and closed doors. But uh, so if if animation means yelling at players and, and putting on a show, I apologize for the lack of showmanship. Uh, it's just not going to happen. It's never been that. It's never been my style, even in San Francisco, where all the passion and fire uh, that narrative was created. It was more in celebration, um, you know, playing great defense, getting takeaways, getting stops. Uh, and celebrating with the guys and on all the work that they put in to see them have that that success, um, I'm always going to be the first one to 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 jump up and down for them. Aside from their family, I guess. Coach, you you guys released Alvin Cook today. Why the before the first and last game of the year? Um, you know, there's obviously a a, a business part to it, but Delvin's been an unbelievable teammate and. Uh, uh, we really, really appreciate his time. I know it hasn't gone nearly as well as anyone had hoped for, especially him. And uh, um, but just an opportunity for him to get out there and uh, um, try to finish off the season strong. He's got a lot of juices left in his legs, and like I said, it just didn't work. But 
uh, again, an opportunity. He's done he's done us well, and we you know he's been an unbelievable teammate. Like I said, and even through all this adversity, he's been a great mentor to his teammates. He's been a great uh, sounding board for coaches. Um, he's been awesome, and uh, just appreciate everything he's done here. Woody has given you a vote of confidence. What what does that do for you? Um. I'm, I'm always uh, focused on the next opponent. Right now, it's obviously it's Patriots trying to finish this, this thing strong, and uh, uh, always, always appreciated. You know, he's uh, I speak to Woody daily, and uh, and he's always uh, been very supportive. Obviously, challenges us daily, but at the same time, he it's uh, we've never wavered with regards to support. Did you ever think that? Your job was in jeopardy. I, you say you don't worry about that, but in a quiet moment, when the owner says, you know, you're all coming back, that's got to feel good. But did you ever wonder that you weren't coming back? Uh, I'm saying no. Uh, it's just a, um, like I said, it's a, uh, I don't, you don't have time to think about that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're just focusing on the moment. You're focusing on trying to get uh, uh, the, do the best job for your players. If you're worried about next year, you're worried about the past. It just it doesn't it doesn't do anyone any good. And I've said it before. There's two types. There's those who have been fired and those who are about to get fired. And, um, and you know you just you've got to stay in the moment. You got to stay disciplined. The players are counting on you to put your best foot forward, just like we're counting on them to put their best foot forward. So uh, worrying about external noise and worrying about jobs and and all that stuff. It's that's not that's not our place. That's for that's for all of you guys. Robert Sala is our guest here on the Michael K. Show. You know, we spoke about this before he came on, so it's only fair to say it to you. You know, this has been the year in the NFL of the backup quarterback. A lot of, lot of starters have been hurt. A lot of teams have survived and almost thrived with backup quarterbacks. What do you think is – I know that you guys have also had a very big extenuating circumstance with the offensive line being ravaged as well. But why haven't you guys been able to squeeze more out of your backups than other teams have? Um, I'll, I'll let you, you know, I've got a, <laughs> uh, stuff that we're going to study. Obviously I've, I've got my thoughts. I've got, uh, you know, and anything I say right now is just going to be presented as an excuse, but, right. it's, uh, but I do think I, I do appreciate the way our guys have battled. We got the four and three, um, after the giants game and, you know, just things didn't go well the, the the way we were hoping for over the second half of the season. Um, we have a chance to finish strong when three of our last five, uh, which would be awesome. But uh, uh, there was a little bump in there where we mm -hmm. just couldn't, couldn't couldn't get over the hump after the Giants game. And, uh, you know, there's no excuse for it. we got to be better. we got to be better as coaches. we got to be better as players. We've got to figure out where exactly uh, we went wrong in that middle, that middle portion of the season. And... Uh, and ensure for everybody that it doesn't happen again. And sorry about the redundancy of, of this question because we've asked you a lot over the weeks, but it's really, I think, come to a head over the last two weeks. 26 penalties in the last two games, Coach. What is that about? That's just an inordinate amount of penalties. Yeah, no, there's... Um, it, it's, it, it hasn't been good. Uh, the discouraging thing about last week uh, was a lot of the pre-snap penalties. Um, uh, the offsides, the illegal formations, the delay of games. Um, that's it, that's not good. Um, I'll always look inward. Obviously, on pre-snap penalties, you're always going to look inward as a coach. Same with post-snap. Um, and so just, just challenging ourselves from an offensive staff, even defense, and making sure that we're, we're putting our players in a position to be able to, to be successful. Um, I know uh, over the last five weeks we've gotten a little bit more production on offense. It's not saying a lot, but it's uh, but we have been producing, with the exception of the Miami game, um, and generating points and generating opportunities. We just and with that comes a little bit more uh, complexity with regards to offensive design, and uh, you know we're trying to create more space. So, like I said, it's it's things that we've got to be better at. Uh, we've got to find a way to simplify for our players, but remaining complex. To, uh, so we can keep the ball moving the way, uh, in the manner of which we all desire. But um, but it's definitely something that we've all got to look at and make sure that we're we're much more efficient in these situations moving forward. Everything is baby steps. Is it important to win this game against the Patriots just to get that monkey off your back while they haven't won 15 straight games? And you know you go into next year with a clean slate. How important is this game for you? Um, I feel like every game is important. I mean, it's kind of a I know it's kind of cliche, but. We put in so much work. Players put in so much work. They're sacrificing their bodies. Coaches are spending hours upon hours in these meeting rooms trying to uh, come up with a game plan, and they'll stay here until 2, 3 in the morning, and players will grind and 
through practice and they're going to go through a 70 play game on each side of the ball um you don't do all that with the expectation to, to not to not win you, you do it to win a football game you do it to put your best foot forward and uh uh, so it always feels good to win regardless of the time of year, regardless of what's at stake. Um, whether it's preseason, postseason, in season, it doesn't matter. You want to win every game that you play. All right, so i got to finish with this. You have seven kids, Christmas. Do you make sure that each kid gets the exact same amount of gifts? Does that fall under your wife's um, uh, official duties or your duties? I mean, does each kid get five gifts, so it's 35? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> So, you know, it's whatever Santa comes up with. Right, just in right. Case listening. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, you're, you're in conference, you know, in, in constant contact with them, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, you know, uh, put on the list. Uh, you know, if they've been good, Santa usually comes up See, big. So <laughs> That's the answer, Michael. What, what does Robert have to This is Santa's problem. But I understand. Like, my kids wanted iPhones. I said, no, Santa doesn't do electronics. Right. It's not happening. So why are you asking Robert or Robert's but, wife about uh, number okay, of presents? This so is a Santa issue. Coach, did Santa give each kid the same amount of gifts? No, uh, you know, if, if it's on, if it's on the Christmas, I think it was, if it was on the Christmas list. List Santa came through this year. So, um, all right. Um, you know, it depends if they if they want one big thing or they want five little things, whatever they come up. I leave my wife to that one, and she figures out the best way to deliver that message. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I I have two kids, coach, and like Christmas morning is like a zoo. I can't imagine seven kids screaming and opening gifts. It must be amazing. Uh, it's. You know what? At uh, four thirty in the morning, the wife is not happy because she's being woken up because they keep opening and closing the door. <laughs> I know. But um, but it's it's a blessing. Uh, the good Lord's blessed us all, and we have the ability to give our kids as much as possible and put them in a situation where they can be happy every morning. And it's, uh, you know, not everyone can say that. And uh, so we, we're always blessed. All right. Well, we will talk to you next week with a post mortem. I know this has not been an easy year for you and dealing with us as well, but we thank you and a, and a happy new year to you and good luck on the weekend. Happy new year, guys. Appreciate you all. All right.